Hi everyone, David Maley here and today I'm going to show you a little bit of ex more exploratory data analysis through using R and ggplot and what we're going to do is we're going to look at some uh, interesting concepts here so if you look at the screen here this is R Studio and as we go down the screen here you need to install something called tidyverse that's a library and if you look here I did this on purpose uh, if you misspell or you use an uppercase wrong R is very picky and peculiar and it won't bring in what you want it says it aired out it couldn't find it because it's actually spelled this way down here so what you would do is you just hit install it'll already pull up a menu for you to choose from you just pick in the drop down install that packages and then what you want to do is you want to install tidyverse okay and once you install it, it'll read like this. It'll say it's installing it in from Crayon R Studio, and it's free once you have R installed. And Tidyverse contains ggplot, which is one of the advanced, or it's actually called ggplot2, one of the advanced graphing uh, packages in this library. So you'll see down here, it loads in, when you load in Tidyverse, it loads in ggplot2, as I just said, per, tibble, and some various things you're going to use. Uh, in this case, we're just going to use ggplot for right now. So we go down here, and here is where I can load in um, a data set. So in this case, I'm loading in Titanic. That's actually not the data set I'm going to use in this video, but I'm just showing you how you use it. And it says here error because, you, again, see how there's a space right there? It doesn't know how to read spaces. So make sure when you have, uh, you create folders and you put these things under it, Make sure you use a folder with proper naming. So you have an underscore for the space or no spaces because if you have a space in it, this is what will happen. And it won't find your uh, files. So you go to the next one here and you can see where I have read the CSV file into test data. And in this case, it shows you uh, that it worked. It read it in. And the reason being is it goes straight to the training.csv. It goes straight to through the folder structure to it and if you look right here look at the uh, slashes okay now when you normally look at slashes in something like here this is the way they'll normally be represented it's the opposite in R so if it's not going where you want or you've loaded in something like this and it's telling you it can't find it it's because you have to turn the slash the other way get rid of the C prompt and uh, or C colon and just like this to where you have it and then wherever you have it stored and once it's loaded in correctly, you'll see over here, it's loaded in, in the, in the case of test data, the uh, Titanic data set, it has 891 observations, it tells you it's all in there. I'm going to, right below that, I'm going to load in day, uh, data, which is uh, a day data set, which is actually the bike share data set, which I've used in several of my videos. And that one has 731 observations, it loaded it in. And if I type head day data, what that does, it gives me the top several of the uh, items in there. So I can actually see, or rows, of data. So I can see the column names and the actual data in there. And I can also type in summary of the new uh, data set. And I, it'll actually summarize and give me the quintiles, the mean, median, minimum, and max of each of the rows. So I can see the breakdown of how close or how variable the uh, distribution is. And so I go through that. And now this is where it gets more interesting. So in this one, this row right here, I use ggplot. And I'm using my day data set. But look what happened here. I had an error. Why? Same thing again. I actually have it created as day data with the day capitalized, the D in the day, and the D in the data capitalized. You have to have it exactly correct. And in this case, what we're doing is ggplot of our data set. We're using our x and y variables. In this case, if you look above, you have temperature and you have count. Count is your total number of rentals. I could have used registered or casual, but that will only show new users or subscribed users. I want all users. And then what I'm doing is I'm adding geometric point, which gives us a uh, scatter plot, and uh, geom jitter adds extra points. So if there's not enough points or if they're too close, they may not show 
correctly. You might have some points hidden by others. When you use Geome Jitter, what that does is it actually scatters them a little bit around where they are, so you can actually see them better. And then Geome Smooth, what that does, it gives you a linear line, which once it's entered, you see right here, it gives you this plot right here. And this plot gives me both the uh, smooth line, which shows me the breakdown of the data, and you can see here this is count versus temperature, but it's times 100. See, I did that in here. And the reason being is in this actual data set, if you were to look at the temp data, let's see if we go up here to the actual data, and where is temp? There's temp. Temp is actually shown as a uh, decimal. So it's actually uh, not like 34 degrees or 34 dot. 25 degrees actually shown as like 0 0.344 so what we have to do is we have to multiply it and that's how I get it to show correctly here in this graph and if you look at this the breakdown shows that when it's below 25 obviously you have far fewer rentals while it's cold outside not as many people are going to rent bikes in the inner city uh, to use on a cold day just like you can see here at 50 and 60 degrees, 70 degrees, this is your hot spot for people renting. But I want to see a little bit more, and I want to see something more interesting here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this same idea that we just did right here with this graph, but I want to add one extra little feature to it. Do you know what that's going to be? Let's see here. I'm going to bring it in here. And what I want to do is it's the same. it looks the same, right? ggplot, day data, let's change this D because if I don't, we will obviously have an issue there as we saw up here. But you see there's one extra thing. So we've got Y equals count, comma, space, color equals registered. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to color this based on registered users. So what I want to do then is same thing. Let's hit enter. Now look at the difference. So the difference is the first one had it all black. Everything was black and it just had a the same pattern distribution. But now we've got this extra little uh, color uh, def definition here which says that as more registered users are on, or the higher it is, the lighter the color blue, the lower the registered users, the darker. And if you look at this map, you can actually take an area pretty much like right here, this quarter of it right here, which is more newer users, not registered users. The so more registered users use it in this period. So by looking at that, what we can do very simply here is we can see the subscribed users or their usage is heaviest from about here, about 35 degrees to 90 degrees. That's very heavy for registered users. Uh, the non-registered, which is also in this data called casual right here. Casual is non-registered, and then registered is the, the subscribers. The non-registered casual or new users are heaviest in the coldest weather. So we can look down here, and that's, you know, down here from 25 to, uh, you know, 45, maybe 50 degrees. And that's where our new users are. So this shows us an area of opportunity where we could uh, maybe you know market to the op so in if we're in the colder regions we could market to our subscribe base which is a lot bigger than our uh, new user base and try and attract more of those users in that realm we also can see the opposite that we have many more registered users here than we do casual so we could market to new users in this big area of registered users and in either case, we're going to bring, we're going to build more business, have more sales, drive more uh, sales revenue, everything by doing that. And that's just show that's what exploratory data analysis is a part of it. So we're using graphs here and the data from these fields to find areas of interest or things that we may not have seen before, we may not have noticed before. And uh, that's all a part of exploratory data analysis. And you've seen how easy it is here to use ggplot um, in R and R Studio very quickly. You just punch in this these lines just like this, and um, you can quickly see 
trends or uh, insights like and gain insights like this. That's what's neat about data science and expl especially exploratory data analysis. You get to go and be creative and just figure out and see what could be out there, what potentially could I find from my data. And it doesn't matter what the data set is. You just have to look at it, play with it, and see if there's meaningful relationships or correlations that you can bring in and play with. And I've shown you that in some of my other videos too. So please make sure you take a look at those also. And they'll explain to you how I got this data set, where this data set came from, how to load in this data set, uh, various ways of you know, toying with it, whether it be through Rattle or through our studio, and um, how to get meaningful insights like this out of that, and then what you want to do with those insights. Maybe it opens up an opportunity for more marketing in one way or another, as you saw here. And then what you can do is you can take this graph right here that you created, and you can actually save it. What you would want to do is you want to place it in a variable first, 